Welcome everyone. It's the 14th of September, 2022. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. Thanks for being here. Topics that I have on the agenda, security reviews, UX improvements, Hacktoberfest, open UX regressions, stalled pull requests. Any other topics you'd like to be sure we put on the agenda? Um. I guess you've already got UX improvements. I've got some stuff to show, and I think Jan might have some as well. Yeah. Great. What am I showing off some of the prototype stuff? Yeah, and I've got some pipeline graph view enhancements to show. All right. Pipeline graph view. Excellent. Thank you. Any other items that need to be on the agenda? Okay, is the ordering okay? I thought security reviews, relatively quick progress check, and then focus on UX improvements. And we'll try to give ourselves enough time at the end to talk to the other topics. Daniel, is that okay in terms of the ordering? Open UX regressions will be later in the session. Sure. Well, okay. I expect it to be quick, but yeah, sure. Okay, great. All right. Okay, then so this this section security reviews for ux pull requests is mostly about asking the group as a whole how is it going with the security review process is it progressing okay are there any concerns things that need to be raised or from vodak and, and or daniel are there things you need to flag to the rest of us about it i will especially let daniel talk about that as i was not participating in this uh, this point I don't think anything interesting happened here. Great. Okay. Any others who have concerns or topics that we want to discuss in the context of security reviews? Okay. Next um, then. Oh, go update ahead. the design of notifications seems pending for a couple of for two weeks. The only debate in the pull request currently is about the, the area to put it. But so it's not it's, related to security. So it's, oh, been, open oh, okay. two, so it's just, been open for two weeks and hasn't been reviewed. Got it. Okay. So got it. Sorry. So what that really is, is that's an, that may be an example of a stalled pull request. Good. Thanks, Tim. Okay. Any others, Tim? No, I think there was one I chased this morning. They've been waiting for a week, but it looks like it's been reviewed. Okay. So Great. the notification one also doesn't currently have any approvals. So it's not like we're currently delaying that. Ah, so it's it's truly stalled in that sense that their general review is needed. It's one, not just it's one part of it's one part of what needs to go in, so it's not Got gonna. It. All right, okay. Any other topics on security reviews? Okay, and Vadak, I assume the one that you linked in is for the discussion. Yes, designer notifications. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right. Then let's go to UX improvements. So Jan, did you want to take on first? I'll stop sharing my screen and let you share. Um, sure, that's so good. Awesome. Um, so what I'll be sharing is the prototype um, of a kind of future version of Jenkins that uh, that we're potentially working towards. Um, so hopefully you can see my screen. I'm not really sure what screen you can see. Yes. Uh, can you see my... Yes, we can see it just great. Awesome. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a little prototype of where we potentially want to take Jenkins. Um, so Tim and I have been working on this. And this is what we'll be demoing in a couple of weeks' time at DevOps World. Um, so I gave a little demo of this last week, or well, the last uh, last meeting. Um, and we've kind of made several refinements to it since then. So I just thought I'd kind of walk walk everyone through them, um, try and get some feedback before we demo it to a larger audience. 
um, a couple of weeks time. Um, so hopefully you can all see the dashboard. Um, so it looks looks quite similar to what we have at the moment. Um, kind of key difference here is that the, 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 the navigation bar at the top has moved to the left, um, just so we have more vertical space. Um, and this persists kind of as you scroll down, so it's always present. Um, if we go to a project, it's a bit broken at the moment, um, but the layout is quite different to what we have at the moment for, for projects. Um, so instead of kind of lots of links on the left, uh, those those pages have been kind of pulled out into these individual card components. Um, so say for example, the stage view uh, appears at the very top, build history next to it. And as you scroll down, you'll have more information about your the project that you're viewing, for example. So we've got the test result trend and stages and kind of empty blocks at the moment uh, just to fill the space, but we'll, we'll fill them before DevOps World. Um, these cards are interactable, so you can full screen them, for example, and that will show you more information um, about that block. Um, if we open up a build, um, Kind of follows a very similar pattern where we instead of having a large kind of sidebar we instead display that information all at once on the page so it's kind of less clicking ideally um so the very first thing you'll see is this this kind of large console pane or card um it's kind of one less click to interact with it um you also have kind of quick actions such as the copy button to copy the log or download to download it uh, again, you can full screen it to get kind of more information and for it to fill the space. Um, that's the kind of pattern that we're kind of developing here really for, for these pages is this kind of card layout that can kind of flow to different screen sizes. So if you're on a mobile, it'll fit nicely there. If you want an ultra wide, it'll scale to that too. So you'll have lots of, lots of information. Um, so that's the kind of project and build pages at the moment um, needs a bit of work, but again, we'll, we'll develop that in the next couple of weeks. Um, we've got a kind of really basic new project page at the moment. Um, and the idea behind this is that plugins can integrate with it. So it's kind of taking inspiration from Blue Ocean in a way. Um, so you might have kind of, um, kind of, what do you call them, kind of Git instances, and they can provide little pieces of UI that can plug into this page. Um, so if I want to connect to a Git repo, I just tick, hit GitHub and I can fill in the information and we can go straight from there rather than building a project and doing it that way. Um, hopefully make the kind of process a bit smoother, but again, it's a bit work in progress. Um, and then the last thing that we've been kind of looking at so far is updating the settings page. Um, so in this instance, rather than having the kind of little I don't know, card layout that we have at the moment, we instead adopt a little sidebar. Um, it looks like so, really. Um, and you can kind of just quickly click through them um, to jump from section to section. Um, and it'll hopefully be a bit easier to navigate than what we have now. Um, but yeah, that's that's the kind of current prototype we've got at the moment. Um, still a work in progress. But if anyone has any thoughts or, or ideas, we're all for all ears really. So on the on the settings here, the switch from card layout to the wider layout is that to is that to give more more space for interactions? Is that? Tell me about that one. I've I've enjoyed the card layout before, so I was I'm a little surprised this one's switching. Tell me more about it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so for me, um, currently the pages of of kind of Manage Jenkins that they kind of a lot of the stuff in the pages aren't necessarily related to one another. Um, so if we could break that out um, into into kind of more sections, if possible. And that's where I think the kind of sidebar approach would be better. It's easy to kind of flick through various pages rather than having to 
kind of going back to this main settings hub, if you want to call it that, just to draw into another section. Um, but yeah, it's it's just an idea for now. It's not something that we're necessarily pulling for, but it's just an exploration, really. Well, and I, I love the exploration. So the concept conceptually then on the left hand on the sidebar, there would be at least one row for each of the items that's currently in managed settings and some of them would get more than one row? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So typically related to the last comment there, so you expect to split the configure setting this configure system page into multiple sections. Um, where, where it would make sense, yes. Um, because right now kind of plugins can put stuff in there as well. Um, and it can kind of get a bit all over the place. So if we could kind of better organize that, that would be ideal, I think. Perhaps a concern that could be raised there is more about the discoverability of the stuff. When you install a mm -hmm. new plugin, it's not always very easy to find where the plugin is putting its configuration. If it's in the security settings, the system settings, the job mm -hmm. settings, or anywhere. And looking at the different page, doing a control F kind of like just searching the page is sometimes pretty useful, especially in very large instance. So you could just act, wondering uh, about the kind of sort of search work. here as well, which kind of helps solve that security issue as well. Because I think an, an example is Git plugin recently chain added some feature. Um, I can't remember quite about, but it went on the security page, which was a bit different to other things. And so, so it's another place to look for, but you could search, find all Git configuration by searching or something like that. Well, so and, I know that Jan's been trying to enhance some of the search as well. Certainly, on okay, on my Android device, I've learned now by hard experience that when I want to do settings, I always have to search for it anyway, likewise on my Chromebook. So the concept here might be add a search facility here that lets me search for all of the settings and then find the things that match, Tim, is that what you were saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I agree. the The example you gave from the Git plugin is a is a, a very recent one. It it intentionally put something in security because it was security related. But all the other configuration things for the Git plugin system wide are, are in the system configuration page. So now it's in two places. Yeah. Good. Also, <laughs> the search uh, searchability of the plugin is something that the plugin has to change themselves. Or something that is done automatically at some point. What do you expect? Yeah, for search. Yeah. Of I'm not sure at this point. Um, so Jan's existing search stuff kind of integrates with more uh, components like users, builds, um, other jobs, and everything. So it's a. I'm not sure if you've seen it, the pop out one, which um kind of splits the search results out into different sections so you can see what sort of thing it is um so that's that's something that he's prototyped at some point and did start exploring the search for the design library as well look kind of a similar sort of idea um to this but like searching all the design library components so you don't have to try and find what you're looking for um but you need to explore that a bit further yeah, typically, if you have a search that is specific to the configuration page, that could be pretty nice because if you are using the just the generic one, you will get confusion, conflict with all the build and all the, the job and this kind of thing. So that could be just a, a bit annoying. Yeah, it, this looks so promising. Jan, could you take us back to the home page? I wanted to ask some questions about the cards there, if that's so in. I've been using descriptions at the top to hide additional information. I think that in this in, envisioned layout, the descriptions are gone to focus instead on, on the jobs themselves and their results. Have I understood correctly? Um, pretty much, yeah. Um, if we go back to the dashboard, um, we have a little card for the description there. And so I imagine that would kind of have a similar pattern um, on the projects and build to. Um, just not not that part up yet. 
and and I had a question, Uli, I believe, I think Uli Hoffner was with us. No, maybe he's not here. I was wondering if there was experience from, oh, you are, okay, with warnings in G, are there, are there experiences you've had on this card style layout that, that might inform us in terms of, hey, what's worked well and what hasn't worked well in terms of concepts and ideas? Yeah, the things I'm doing in the warnings plugin is a static page only for the warnings plugin, but this page looks like a dynamic one which uses, let's say, some kind of widgets from each plugin, like you have on your iOS screen where you can say, okay, I have a widget for two rows and three columns. This looks like it. Is this the idea, Jan, that we have that plugins can provide widgets for these screens which have a given width and a given height or what is the intention yeah um that's pretty much it really um in the kind of the, the idea is that plugins are able to kind of like you say provide a widget and they'll sit inside this little card surface um, and they can provide you know, optional controls on the top right as well. So it's always kind of consistent between plugins. Out of curiosity, are you guys using a framework here for the the UX elements or? Um, no, no framework um, for this. And so back to Uli's question on the sizes, there, there are some conceptual sizes here then like build history is it two by two and stage view is four by two or is is that not a concept for you um it is i've just not really kind of had the chance to think that through yet um mm -hmm. but as you can see on this kind of larger size it doesn't really scale too well um because a two kind of column widget can't fit in kind of the one space so it's a bit bit weird at the moment it kind of fits better like that it's Currently, just it's large card and regular card, I think, at the moment. That's... Ah, okay. I think we tried something similar with the pull request dashboard, where we propose a lot of widgets which show the yeah the results of a pull request, how many changes, how is the code coverage of a pull request, etc. And we started with. Um, pixels as yeah as width and height and this was not really good so i think it would be much better if we have a layout like a grid of 12 by 12 or what else and then we can have some widgets which are only small widgets or large widgets yeah. this would really awesome for plugins to contribute to this requires a lot of work for the plugins but i think it's worth it very helpful for plugins if we can currently we have just a list of blocks which is not really helpful if this there are so many plugins in one job so i think it's a really good idea to go this way and one thing i think would be really helpful if i'm not sure this configure button uh, is maybe it's not yet programmed but it would be helpful if we can select widgets somehow. So because some people would like to see the test results, some other people would like to be the stage view, and some would like to see the build history, but nobody is interested in everything, I think. So because typically in a team, you have project manager who is more interested in some overviews and the deep developers would like to see something totally different. So it would be helpful if we can configure this per user. So are you envisioning it as a per user thing? I was assuming this was a static page, static definition page like the current Jenkins pages, Jan. Oh. I'm, I'm thinking it could go either way really. Um... I do like the idea of it being customizable. Um, obviously, everyone has different needs. Um, it'll just depend on how much kind of complexity that adds to, to everything, really. Um, I have to kind of see how it kind of develops, really. Cool. Thank you. This is beautiful. This is really marvelous work. 
and, and the bar on the left is just the, the dark bar on the left is just part of the web page. Yeah, um, that's the kind of so on on kind of current Jenkins, you've got like the build history um, mm -hmm. and the users. They kind of sit there at the moment. Um, not too sure how useful that is. Um, I'm kind of seeing this bar as like a place to have kind of permanent links that you, that you kind of frequently want to access or links that kind of span across pages, for example. Um, so it depends kind of what, what's useful. Um, kind of home or dashboard is, is useful. Search kind of pops over the kind of current interface and settings, I guess, is valuable, but the rest I'm not too sure yet. Impressive. Any other questions for Jan? A anything else you want to show Jan before we switch to Tim? Um, I'm not everything. Oh, sorry. We have a question about this UI. What parts do you envision to be extensible? Because, I mean, this looks great. But as we know, for example, from side panels of jobs and builds, the challenge is to make it work once every plugin dumps additional links everywhere. Because obviously, every vendor or things, their own plugin deserves a spot in the top level navigation that's shown on every page. Um, and so this won't be just seven links, but more like 50. And how well does it work then? Mm -hmm. um, so for the dashboard, I was kind of envisioning this, this kind of sidebar as being extensible, um, kind of much the same way as it is now. Um, plugins can provide their own cards here, for example. Um, currently, kind of secondary sidebar links would appear underneath this kind of overflow button kind of links that aren't important or very rarely used for example um so yeah um will definitely be areas for plugins to integrate but i guess it, it's still an issue if we kind of go overboard with it you know So I interpret that to mean that the, the left-hand side will be less extensible. It's less likely that somebody is going to add their own there because likely will be blocked from doing so. They would be rather added to the three dots on the right. Did I understand that correctly, Jan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, any, any kind of, kind of Jenkins wide spanning link, such as settings, which is accessible from every page, um, will sit on the left, kind of page specific actions will sit in the kind of page frame, whatever you want to call it, I'm kind of losing words, um, but yeah. To evaluate this, it would be interesting to know kind of how the existing in, uh, extension points map to locations on the new UI. So for example, root action, if the bar on the left is not extensible at all, um, where do root actions go? Uh, stuff like that. I think that would be interesting. Um, I Similarly, on this page, how would you present existing prominent project actions, which is what graphs and such are currently uh, implemented with if they show up on the build's main page? Um, so I think that would be uh, or jobs the main page. So I think that would be interesting, you know, existing extension points and where they appear, even if with reduced fidelity, because there's some backwards compatibility requirement there. And for it to look really great or integrate really nicely, for example, to have this uh, full screen button on the top right of each block, they need to use a new API. So I think that would be very interest, uh, very interesting, very important, because obviously, we're not starting from scratch, right? We have 2000 plugins. Mm -hmm. We need to take along on this. And if Jenkins looks great, if you have zero plugins installed and is an unusable mess as soon as you have a realistic setup, uh, I don't think that would benefit anyone. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, I'll, I'll have to kind of start writing up some kind of docs on this, really. Um, oh, yeah. Um, that, that, that's the kind of price type, really. Um, like, if anyone I has mean, any kind of feed... Oh, sorry. Don't, don't get me wrong. It looks great. Um, so I, I like the bar on the left, for example, design-wise. And last time when you presented this uh, build view already, I think it looks nice, but um, I worry about how all of the plugins that people are already using will integrate with this. Um, mm -hmm. In Blue Ocean, we basically didn't even attempt it and that didn't go well. And so I think with a UI redesign like this, we need to have a plan to make existing functionality still be reasonably accessible. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the existing, I just bring up like uh, CI Jenkins. Oh, no, it's, um, for the existing kind of project uh, page, kind of plug-in integrations. I was imagining we could just kind of wrap them in a kind of basic card at the moment. Um, so for example, the test results could be a card and then the current stage could be a card um, and that can just say be placed at the bottom, for example. Um, so you still have that backwards compatibility, but say when a plugin developer kind of enhances it for the new design, it might get a more prominent position. For example, it might get access to the new kind of controls and so on. Um, so it can integrate better. Um, one thing I'd, I do want to get kind of get rid of is kind of this idea that plugins can just chuck stuff wherever because it kind of gets a bit unwieldy. Um, like right. <laughs> That's literally what's on those, I think. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, and and you, you you missed the most important one. Could you go back to CI Jenkins IO to the main page? Sure. Uh, that was the dashboard. Yeah. So where does the we need beer link go? <laughs> <laughs> That's put to sit in the far left, surely. Okay. So it's, it's extensible after all. Okay. Yeah. We, we, just, we just need to put beer. that one plug in. <laughs> Those of us who do not, do not drink beer object to this, but okay. That's... You can have your grape juice, Mark, or orange juice, or whatever you want. Can I ask a couple questions? I don't know if I missed, do you guys have a date in mind when you're hoping to have this kind of in users' hands? Or is it kind of TBD? Um, yeah, no, no date, really. Um, um, this, there... this isn't Jenkins at, at all. This is just a prototype. It's not okay. built on top of Jenkins itself. So is that like six months, a year, <laughs> next week? <laughs> no, like... um... uh, no I, I, Christine, I, I, the answer I interpreted was this is this is a sketch that's realized as code. Right. So and and Tim and and Jan, I, I I heard no no mention of any date, and I wouldn't expect anything, right? I mean, it's whenever whenever the prototyping looks good and it evolves and continues to evolve and go forward. Yeah. Okay, um, Christina. Sorry, back to you. Uh, no. No, that was that was a. Um, I imagine kind of um, is there a deliberate decision to kind of remove some of the Jenkins branding, or is that something still being um, worked through? Um, yeah, no decisions around that really. Um, I had a little Jenkins logo there initially, but it just it kind of got a bit corrupted, so I changed it to a home uh, symbol. But yeah, no no thoughts on branding really. It would be nice to make it more Jenkins D. That's a word. And as well as the accessibility piece, because I noticed that there's some like keyboard traps and stuff. So I, assume, I if this is a proof of concept, I'll stop looking. Um, but yeah. it's just something to have top of mind as you're building. Awesome. I'll um, 
I'll stop sharing. Um, if anyone has any kind of further thoughts or anything, do do give us a ping. Um, especially in the next two weeks as we've been demoing it to like an audience in, in DevOps world and I don't want to get screened out. So would be would be nice. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, so we'll be at the contributor sub summit on the Tuesday and then on the Thursday we'll be presenting this at DevOps World. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks very much to both of you. Grateful well, that you're traveling that. to Orlando. See you there. Sorry, go ahead, Christina. No, I'm just curious what next steps would look like um, after the demo. We'll do some hacking on the plane. <laughs> but we'll see how we get on. TBD. Big TBD. Okay, hey, Tim, You, I think you had the next topic. Yep. So I'll share um, some of the enhancements to the pipeline graph view plugin that's came in. Um, so um, quite a few people would have seen this before, um, but pipeline graph view plugin was a kind of prototype that I did during the um, UI UX hackathon last year. I haven't really had much time to work on it over the last year since the hackathon itself. Um, the last, there's been a couple few features introduced since by other contributors, but basically it's a idea about moving Blue Ocean into classic view into the regular Jenkins um, and kind of re-implementing some of the features, hopefully with more of a um, extensible approach and without needing the, basically the custom app that Blue Ocean is and making it a lot easier to develop on and maintain. Um, so since the initial release, I probably haven't really presented it much since then, but um, it's had two new features since then. One was the um, job view and one was a um, pipeline logs view as well. Um, those are all in kind of semi-broken state. There were some issues and the um, Blue Ocean graph wasn't accurately represented um, as it was uh, in the pipeline graph view. Some things just didn't work right for my prototype. Um, but over the last week, we've had a contributor come along and fix all of those issues, basically, um, all of the graph related issues. So currently have currently have no open issues with any um, reproduction issues from Blue Ocean to the graph. Um, and there's also some pipelines that can be represented in the graph that couldn't that Blue Ocean wasn't able to handle. Um, the, only, and the only open issue related to the graph is now the um, parallel pipeline visualization support, um, which was the most upvoted issue on Blue Ocean and was never solved. So then that's the only visualization issue still open. Um, so I'll show you some of the enhancements. So there's a recent one. So an issue that was fixed yesterday was, um, let's go here, show a simple one. Um, it's taken a deviation from Blue Ocean where declarative is now showing its synthetic stages. Um, previously in declarative, they sh it was shoehorned into the previous stage. So there's a synthetic stage in declarative SCM when a uh, when it does the global checkout for the for the whole agent um, that was just randomly put in the first stage. Um, and same with post action. So if you did a post actions across the whole pipeline, that was put into the last stage randomly, but that was found as a bit confusing. Um, and so we've just put that in here just to see how it works. Um, the benefit is you get a actual um, stage up here at the top and you can see the checkout um, in case that's ever useful. Um, so one thing that I'm working on that's not released at the moment is I'm adding, um, um node status to stages and steps so you see here these have got the um tick to say that that step was successful um so that's all working i just haven't um created a pr for it yet um just to show you one where it's failing i think this one here so this is a um this is a build from the slack plugins master build which I'm running on my local machine so some things aren't quite there so this is the visualization as in blue ocean um it's all accurate um if i go here you get to see that the parallel branch failed that was the linux 8 branch failed um in the build stage um nested stages don't work properly so this in theory should be nested under another level but it's 
uh, that doesn't quite work in the log. Um, and if you go down here, you'll see that it was the step here that failed. And uh, you click on it, and you can see the logs. And this is one of those Jenkinsisms where it failed for a agent connection issue, which never appeared in the Blue Ocean log either. So if I were to go to the plain console log, you'd see um, that it's got a stack trace with uh, no, no such method error. That's what it failed with. Um, and the same with Blue Ocean. So Blue Ocean wouldn't display that either. It's the same sort of error. Um, cause be using similar APIs, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that's, um, the stuff that's kind of most of this is real. And so the other thing is that it used to be for those who've seen this before, say on ci.jenkins.io, um, what there was a few, there's some, you want, I'll just show you the released version. So it's a, uh, it depends on whether they've updated or not. Um, pipeline graph. So, so, so yeah, this should all be fixed visualizing. Um, um, so, so yeah, so they haven't updated it here, but you see that there used to be a couple of UX issues here. One, um, the step would overflow into the pipeline log area. Um, and the other issue is that you can't really tell the difference between steps as they're pretty much the same. There's no real clear separation. Um, so we've added, um, um kind of this it's probably a bit more obvious and not dark theme but there's little separators between each step uh if i go to here this uh, it's all rounded and highlighted more clearer and the text doesn't overflow anymore sorry daniel were you saying something before uh no uh, okay, so I think also, also probably says. probably also helps that it's a, that's a, that it's a one column view now, so you have more space. Right. Yeah. So that's the other thing is that I've um, got rid of the side panel um, as before. It only had this back to build thing, which took up all the space over here, taking up a lot of room for nothing basically. Um, and same here with the graph. Um, it was moved all, all this far away over to the right. Um, and so now it's moved to a much better location, um, which yeah makes it all work quite a lot better. So something I'm working on, which isn't released yet, is kind of pulling in some of the concepts from um, the prototype um, that was showed earlier. So if you see here, this is using the um, card design. So it's pulled in a um, uh, the build display name. Um, hopefully pull in the for pull request hopefully pull in a pull request title here probably um and it's yeah pulled in um the card details and the stage um and you can rebuild it and go to like a configure page um uh, showing that links yeah so that's going to the right place this will trigger a new build but it's not actually um hooked up fully so it's so is there a way for me to suppress that card on the right hand side sometimes my graphs are are uh, are embarrassingly large so or is is the the card that you're showing with details expected to be yeah that's going to be there no matter what um i'm just trying to think if i've got a big one here do i i got the packer i've got the packer images matrix just to see what it looks like. So that's a fairly large one. I'm not sure how big you're thinking. Yeah, so my worry was more about the horizontal rather than the, the vertical. The vertical, I think that handles it very, very well. There are times when I've got long, long chains that are running. Oh yeah, so should I think if I have any big ones? And and Tim, you don't particularly need to even show it. it. It looks like this is ready for me to do some experimenting and testing, and you'll happily take bug reports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me just. Let's just do my stage post parallel. Live stress testing. I'm very impressed, Tim. 
just try it. Don't even, I mean, labels are even unique, so it doesn't even matter. Um, I'll just run that, that should. Cool. So it scrolls okay, like that. Okay, so it just horizontal scroll bar, okay. Yeah, All right. well, I hadn't tried on any long ones, but yeah, so that, and it would, um, it would have like yarns, that's, if you remember the full screen sort of click, so you could, you could add that and then expand it out fully. Um, but yeah, so this is something that I'm just working on at the moment, I'm not sure. And it's, yeah, it's, so this isn't a React app, so I'm not sure how extensible or whatnot, but it's kind of just a prototype I'm working on. Mm. Pro probably just to sit in this plugin for now and then look at how we can pull things in better in a more extensible way. And kind of just as a early look before before bringing this into the main Jenkins, it's kind of a good place that we can experiment with some of this in, in a plugin. Now, now, you had mentioned something earlier that's, you, you you got me all wound up and happy about build 374 that was on the page there. Um, you mentioned that might someday be the description of the pull request. So that instead uh, of trying to remember what PR nine means, it would tell me, Hey, this is, this was what pull request nine's description was. So we've got that in the prototype at the moment. So this at the top is the Jenkins build display name. And then this is the pull request title. Mm, okay. Um, so we should kind of assume that you'd want both the Jenkins build display name and the pull request title, probably. Um, and ideally some, if you're pulling some like, uh, where you're basically just bringing some of the Git information a bit more into Jenkins so that, you know what, it's not PR370, it's Mark did something. Exactly, yeah, thank you, yeah. I, I agree. I think the build number is is good. The build identifier is good, but but I would love to have that pull request there because I inevitably click through that thing to find out which pull request is this. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of trying to pull some of this information a bit cleaner in as well. If I just go to a simpler one. Um, yeah. So it's got like the PR link and that in a nice, easy to find place because the existing CI it's not. It's in a giant side panel down here, if it's even here. Yeah, you have to go up one more level to get it right. to, to get the GitHub link, right? And now the GitHub link is there, but it's in the middle. Yeah, yeah. it's really hard to find amongst a bunch of stuff unrelated. And is there not really not a pull request link at all on here? Or not a, like oh, a branch oh, link? Oh, I'm I sure guess. there is, yeah. Yeah, hold on, I've got a, got a pull request. So, uh, I could have sworn there was a pull request link, but I can't even find it. So yeah, exactly. Cool. Any questions, any suggestions, anything you'd like to see? So the, the, the graph improvements are already released. So yeah, they're already I released. pipeline graph view, I should be able to compare it to blue oceans graph rendering and any surprises I find you'll happily take as bug reports. Yeah, file an issue with just with a simple pipeline. If you see recent one, basically just don't don't use an agent, just basically just put your stages in and put echoes to identify what stage they are or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so if you see my ones here, they're all, um, so it'll be something like agent any or agent none, mostly agent none. Um, and then using echo, not shell, because you don't need an agent, just so they run super quick, because it's mm -hmm. just about visualization. Um, and a lot of these go into the unit tests as well. So they unit tests will um, show the visualization, make sure the visualization doesn't regress when changes are made. Um, so yeah, in anything we're interested in, um, yeah, anything that doesn't match blue ocean currently, unless there's been decided to deviate. So what these synthetic stages have been pulled up and they've been marked as italics just to kind of highlight that they're a little bit different. They're not, you don't have any control over what they're named or anything. They, they, they are actually prefixed with declarative colon space, which is not really very useful and just takes up a ton of space. So if you look at, I don't know if there's any declarative on CI Jingles IO. Uh, yeah, acceptance tests. So under infra acceptance tests, 
I think the, uh, yeah, check agent availability, I think is declarative. Nope, nope, sorry, it's not helping us back up. Okay, so anyway, if there are declaratives that do do a global checkout, you'll get a stage here, which says declarative checkout SCM. Um, and basically it strips that in this implementation, same with post actions, it strips that. And the reason for it, one was it's not helpful. And two was it the label just cut off because it, it, you're only allowed like 10 characters or whatever before you're outside here and you get the dot, dot, dots, the same as Blue Ocean. I think this is probably an example with long labels somewhere, I'm not sure. Welcome to the, oh, it's, all, it's all the matrix builds. Yeah, so it's these sort of things. Which is not very great and would be good to improve, but just needs to figure out how to make that readable without spamming it. I mean, just doing the values might be a start. Like yeah, so there was a suggestion. All this Linux Chrome. Yeah. And so there was one suggestion to do matrix brackets. Um, and just making it a lot shorter, basically. But yeah, just dropping matrix and simplifying it. Yeah, not sure. Joe, anything else? Looks brilliant, Tim. Thank you. And thanks to whoever that contributor is that contributed those fixes. That's that's really great. Yeah, that was Mike Gelfand. Yeah, so he did all the back graph fixes, basically. Which has been really good. And then I've just been yeah working on some of the console view and the um, cards. And yeah, I hope to do some more work on it before DevOps World and probably show this as well. Yeah. Thank you, that's great. So next topic on our agenda was, let's see, and you should see my screen again. Do you see the agenda? Yeah, okay, good. Next topic I had was Hacktoberfest and UX SIG, and Patty, you wanted to bring this topic. Yeah, hi, uh, I haven't seen you all in quite a while, but um, I'm back. Um, <laughs> So um, CloudBees is trying to um, get more people involved in contributing and seeing the Jenkins workspace. And so I have a UI background, so I'm helping with um, some of the organization stuff that is happening with Hacktoberfest for us. And I was hoping that maybe there would be some good um, issues that we could maybe get from the group, um, just to say, I, I've heard that maybe it's not the best place to be a first time contributor to Jenkins. So of course I will take your, <laughs> um, your feedback with me. Um, but I was just curious, you know, to kind of get the feel of the group to see if it's something that you all had typically participated in as maintainers before, um, or not just trying to get a temperature feel. So, so part of me wondered that most of the UI things for me are are beyond a first time contributor. But with Uli here, I wonder maybe there are things from his experience with coursework at the university and his environment for warnings ng and data tables that maybe that is more of a Hacktoberfest kind of topic. Uli, could you absorb Hacktoberfest contributions or, or did you find them a distraction in years past? Uh, yes, I, I, I tried to use uh, Hackathon last year or Hacktoberfest last year to get some contributors on the UX side, but this was a real a disappointment. I, I think I created uh, about 30 issues in the code coverage plugin and the warnings plugin, which are only UI related. Mm -hmm. Some were really easy and, and some were a little bit more difficult, but actually two issues have been picked, but nobody completed actually any work. So I spent a lot of work to create these issues, but yeah, I had no output at all. So 
I thought maybe it's too difficult. But the problem is you 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 need your UX experience and you need Jenkins experience to understand what's going on. And I think this was the main problem that if you have a UX expert, then you don't have someone who knows what is code coverage and what to show in code coverage. So I'm not sure if it's so helpful. Mm -hmm. Do At those issues in, in still like, Sorry. Sorry. I, I was just, do those issues still exist in that plugin? Um I I think a lot of them I fix on my own. <laughs> yeah. Um and but there are still some here. Yeah. There are some remaining. They are still open and I removed the Oktoberfest label, but I can add it again. So I'm fine with it <laughs> to add it again, but I'm not sure if it's really so helpful. Yeah. I know a part of what I'm trying to do is get a list so that we have them so that when we're in a group, because we actually have some dedicated time for our community team this year, mm -hmm. um, as well as with our like design system team. And we have four uh, front end engineers on that team. Um, and so having a list of what we, you know, is available in the Jenkins space for us to go try to tackle um, might help get better eyes on those um, tagged issues. Um, but also I realize that it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's an ask for a little bit of work for our maintainers who um, are active in this workspace. And so definitely want to make sure that we're respectful of that and um, being helpful and not adding more, you know, useless work for you. Sorry. That yeah, but I think yeah, it's not so really useless because uh, I, I use these issues uh, in a, for different audience. And for instance, I use them these issues for my students. That's okay too. <laughs> so I, I just uh, noticed that it was not um, really helpful for Oktoberfest. Yeah. So. Uh, what I can do is uh, to uh, review these issues that I have, and I also can add a lot of new ones. I have a lot of them I can add, uh, so maybe it's helpful, and if it's not helpful, it's not uh, the effort is okay to spend because I can reuse these issues for other projects as well. So, Okay. Yeah, I mean, that would be great. I know I'm I'm really interested in getting my hands dirty with Jenkins. Yeah. Um, I would be a first time contributor to Jenkins. So um, I would be super curious to see what those issues are. Um, okay. But also I can help kind of um, mobilize them within yeah. our team. Yeah, there are, are some simple issues just to support our yeah, black theme. For instance, there are a lot of things which are not really working yet. So this shouldn't be hard to implement, even for someone who does not know Jenkins really good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, what would I be think great? I can prepare one in, to, to the next week. Uh, I make a list of these issues and send them to the UX list or to you directly, how you prefer. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. That would be uh -huh. extremely helpful. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, there's a number of open issues on Jira, which some of them are probably fine for new contributors, some of them not so. Um, it's quite a lot of open UX regressions, which could probably be looked at. Um, apart from that, there's, if there's like ex more experienced front engineers, there's pieces of work that are getting a bit stalled that could certainly be helped with in certain areas. I'm not sure there's things like Tippy, and then there was the Jenkins button rework that was tried a while ago, um, which would be nice to revive. Okay, would it be uh, would it be helpful for me to go through the Jira and pull things that I that I think are what you're talking about and post them in the Gitter to get feedback on if these are ones that would be good first time issues. <laughs> 
Yeah, you could also do it on the UX SIG repo with a issue or a discussion. Um, um, because Gitter doesn't really thread so well for yeah. ongoing discussion. Okay. Uh, so Tim, the UX SIG repo, that's, can you, could you hook the URL to that? I, I don't have that immediately available. I've put thank it in you. the chat. I can. Ah, oh, thank you. Good. I can put it into the page then if you've got it in the chat. Yeah. Thanks. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Great. So to what degree would um, adapting plugins to recent UI work in core be a, a viable beginner task for Hacktoberfest in general? Like, like I'm thinking of all of these CSS classes like Jenkins table and Jenkins button and stuff like that. I imagine there's probably a thousand plugins that might need updating or to what degree do they need to be adapted to those changes? Yep, that would be a good piece of work. That would be fairly straightforward. Plugins like lockable resources um, and others. It's the most prominent one I know that's not adapted. There's been a lot. The more common ones have been adapted, um, but I'm sure there's plenty of other useful ones to look at. So, and, and Daniel, when you say adapting them to the Jenkins design library, you specifically mentioned CSS, CSS changes, I guess, tables to divs, if they've not already, if they depend on a version after 277, they could remove the workaround. Uh, I know I'm just, I was just working on one yesterday that hasn't yet been adapted because it's such low volume. So tables to divs kind of things, okay. And uh, I'm more like uh, you know, the general tables, like on about Jenkins with the dependencies and the versions and the licenses, oh. or the plugin manager table. I think there's a change there to make them look a lot different than before. Um, I I haven't thought about this beforehand, so there's probably a bunch of potential changes where uh, the UI. Yes, big table is the old one, I think, and that now needs to be a Jenkins table or something, right? Yeah. Yes. Another thing would be icons and colors to use the new defaults that we have. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And another project is things like ripping out back to build links and that sort of thing and removing side panels that don't need to be done. Like, so I didn't actually show it today, but there's a, um, I did a pull request on the credentials plugin to rework its layout a bit. Um, so it basically it removes the side panels mostly and moves um, any actions from there into the app bar, um, along, <laughs> along with a couple other fixes, I think. Okay, so and and those some some or all of those Tim sounded like they might be good first issues or are those yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean that credentials plugin layout rework I think was way beyond a new uh, a first time contributor but icons and colors seems sounds like it could be within reach. Yep. Yeah, to to a degree, the challenge here is basically identifying plugins that misbehave in some way. Not everything is as simple as Tim's query for big table, the keyword. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things is, for example, if you would not have a site panel uh, with links other than, you know, back to dashboard, then we would change the layout to not have a site panel at all, I think is the current rule. And if you know of plugins that do have such pages, then very low hanging fruit kind of improvement is change the layout of the page, uh, which is basically just one keyword in the layout tag, and it'll look consistent with the current uh, design library rules. I think there are a handful of these changes that we can uh, define very generically um, and then, you know, if you have your favorite plugin that few other people are using and you want to look into whether 
you probably, as, as a Jenkins user, you probably already know whether that plugin behaves according to these rules or not. And if it doesn't, you can file pull requests for it. Good, thank you. All right, so Patty, I think that addressed your question. Thanks very much for bringing it. Any other items on Hacktoberfest? So we're now at 14 September. So we're in what the Hacktoberfest team calls Preptember. Welcome to Preptember. We're very glad that you're here and Hacktoberfest starts October 1. All right, ready for next topic. Now we're, we're just past the hour. Daniel, you had said you open UX regressions might be brief. Would we like to take two more minutes for open UX regressions um, and then end the meeting? Or do you think it's going to take longer than that? What's your preference, Daniel? I think it's pretty quick. It's just me sounding like a broken record. Okay, go ahead. Um, so yeah, uh, we have a bunch of UX related regressions and they're not all trivial to resolve as, we, as we've seen in some core pull requests. Uh, usually the change that causes a problem has been done for a reason. Mm -hmm. And just removing a line of CSS will not, while it makes the problem go away, it introduces a different problem. So uh, I wanted to raise this to this group that roughly uh, a third of all UX regressions uh, filed over the last uh, nine months or so are still open. And I don't think that's a great state because while the improvements are nice if at the same and and they look great and everything and at the same time they break people's use cases um then you know acceptance of those changes uh goes down right and uh so i think it's important for us being able to deliver these changes especially larger scale changes to also address reported regressions uh, in a timely manner. Thanks. Thanks for the highlight. Well, and, and this UX regressions over time dashboard, I'll put a link to that into the, or you've already put it into the page, haven't you? Yes, good. Thank you. It's basically just a graph uh, for the same query as uh, Tim's dashboard. It just highlights not just what's currently open, but how much has been filed and how much of that has been addressed. And as you can see, there's quite the gap, uh, both in absolute terms as well as in relative terms. Uh, a third of all file regressions still being open is, is a lot. Thank you. All right. And it seems to keep growing. Thanks for highlighting. Any anything else on open UX regressions? I would say that in some area, Daniel's overstating the impact. Um, like breaking users credit breaking users functionality. Um, I don't think there's any example of things actually broken um, other than a password manager fill or something that's been broken for years. There's a few oddities but um, there's nothing that I'm aware of that's actually broken other than, so the only one that users care about is the weather icons one, which we really just need an SVG to replace it with that looks nice. And so that was done by the CloudBees UX team before they, well, the CloudBees team that was working on this before they rolled off. The last thing that was done was these weather icons. And I think we just don't have a good weather icons set, but that's the only one that users there's more that, that users are up in arms about. Um, obviously, these need fixing, but I think it's kind of overstatement of the regressions. I, I do have a branch for the weather icons. Um, would it be worth kind of getting that up and getting it reviewed, even if the icons aren't perfect? And I guess we can iterate later. Um, yeah, yeah, if they solve sure the kind of issues the users are having. That's the only one there where there's any users complaining, as far as I know. 
the, cool. the rest are oddities that have been picked up and filed. Um, like the sign-in button's gone a little bit extra focused recently for some unrelated change, um, but it's not affecting anyone. Thanks, Tim. Any any other comments or any other items on UX regressions? All right, then I'd propose we go ahead and end. I'll after the recording is archived, I'll upload a copy of the recording. Um, I'm going to actually put index points into this one so that people can see jump to various points in the demos. Thanks, Jean. Thanks, Tim. Looking forward to seeing everybody at DevOps World. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you.